Yo, so guys, welcome back to another video. This is another what if artist um, reaction, and the video is Is America in Decline? Again, people love my reactions to this channel. I don't know if this is posted recently. Obviously, this is a week ago. So, this is his most recent post. But yeah, I just enjoy seeing the videos from this channel. It's quite the fun. Channel? He's really sort of informative, and he seems to know what he's talking about. Again, not everything he says is correct or will be correct in future or whatever. But I just enjoy like the ideas behind what he says and just the general sort of chat of his videos to be honest. But yeah, I mean, people have been asking me to react to more of his videos. Again, there's only so many I can do because I like to mix it up a bit, but I do definitely want to keep up doing the reactions to him. But yeah, I mean, this seems quite like sort of in, what's the word? In con the content that I sort of do, like sort of to do with things to do with the US on like geography and countries in general, like world powers or global superpowers that are going to rise or whatever really i've done reactions like this before and i do enjoy them but yeah we're going to get into this one quick shout out to my instagram my twitter links in the description for those interested same for my patreon links were there for those interested and i mean yeah let's just see what he has to say i'm interested in seeing like what ideas he brings in here and again i know it's not 100 percent what he says will be true but it's still interesting to see so let's get the general this. story now in the world is that america is an irreparable decline Every aspect of American society, whether the culture, economy, politics, etc., is in collapse and is no way back while countries like China or India are rising and quickly surpass America. However, with all this avalanche of media around us, few have asked, is this actually the case? This video will just to look at the evidence and see if America in the decades to come will collapse into obscurity or will remain the world's dominant power. We're going to look at all the evidence involved and try to find the truth of this very complex question. Something not so great has happened in the past few years. You scroll through social media, click an article about a political figure you dislike doing something bad. Then the algorithms pick up on the idea you don't like this leader and would like to see more articles about how bad they are. Mm. Pretty soon your whole newsfeed's covered in articles about how terrible they are. The feedback loop force feeds you on a diet of only political views you agree with and may unintentionally- It's so bad. that is the truest thing I've ever seen, man. <laughs> that is the truest thing I've ever seen. Cause like, you get like, for, for example, with YouTube, you have an algorithm because of the stuff that you sort of watch, you'll get suggested that kind of stuff again and again. Maybe it will help you or make you believe certain things more or make you think neg more negative things more like, about certain things, certain people. And it's true with YouTube, with Twitter, probably with everything, like, because you choose to follow who you follow and you just see like sort of the news that sort of helps you believe what you want or just what he's saying, basically. That's one of the truest things I've ever seen. Uh, you know that you're understanding the world behind your bubble. Thankfully, there's a new app called Ground News that wants- Oh! <laughs> That's for an ad! I thought it was like, onto something right now, fuck's sake! I mean, it's still true, right? It's sort of unconsciously vaulted into the position of superpower- <laughs> fuck's The US sake. is sort of unconsciously vaulted into the position of superpower without much- Shout out to him for getting his money though, honestly. I probably just helped him a little bit talking with that, but shout out to him, man. Getting his bread, you love to see Spot. it. The U.S. quietly spent the 19th century using control over a massive, fertile continental region and becoming the largest economy on Earth. Afterwards, Europe self-imploded and America was dragged in first to protect their cousins the British from the Germans, and then on top of the ash heap that was Europe after the World Wars to protect Western Europe from godless communism. When communism fell apart due to its own bloated self-contradictions, it left the U.S. the sole world power, the only time that had ever occurred in history, but also left the U.S. without direction or pressure, which in turn weakened it. The U.S., for example, spent five trillion, or more than the net worth of Taiwan, on trying to destroy terrorists who didn't even have a real state and who killed less than 10,000 American citizens. America deindustrialized, sending industry to its ideological opponents like China without thinking of the strategic effects involved. In other words, America and its victory became bloated and weak. The US now is clearly in bad shape, something most obviously demonstrated by the political divide which signals a severe lack of social cohesion and underlying problems. People normally point to the US's political issues and China's massive economic growth and then say that the two are connected, with the US in a downwards trajectory and China on and upwards. 
This leads to the key main issue of predicting geopolitics, in that most people don't read enough history and just project the last generation, or what they know, going forward more strongly than it did in the past. However, when you just glance at history, you find national stock markets, if you want to call them that, continually fluctuating. For example, just in the 20th century, Russia went from being a terrifying force in Eastern Europe, to failed state beat by Germany, to communist recluse, to massive bear controlling half of Europe, to collapsed and liberalizing and authoritarian again. Anyone who would try to predict what had recently happened to Russia going forward would just be wrong. The U.S. is clearly in some sort of crisis now. The way I would describe it is just by looking at human life metrics. Standard of living, with the exception of household technologies, has gotten worse for the average American, with really? your average Joe now being fatter, or tired, or lonelier, broker, and having less sex than in any era in living memory. America has become significantly more unequal and politically divided. Historian Peter Turchin is unable to predict political conflicts like the fall of the Roman Republic or the Russian Revolution on the timescales they actually occurred at by looking at a combination of wage stagnation and inequality, and in 2010 he was able to predict the 2020s would be a brutal decade for America, which is what happened. America is currently in a rough spot, but does that endanger the U.S.'s chances of remaining a world power? The truth is that although the stock market might go up and down over the decades, world powers are generally held up by a series of variables, being ideological strength, technological superiority, demographics, social cohesion, historical circumstance, and geography. We're going to look at all of these to see how the U.S.'s position has changed over the last few decades and if it means a permanent weakening of America as a world power. America was at some points able to maintain all of these variables to incredible strength, and going forward, we'll see that some of them will remain strong and some of them will start to decay. A common myth is that America is in decline while the rest of the world is economically surging ahead. This is large. See, I've never actually heard that ever. So I mean, I guess it's just certain people who hear it or certain people who say it. Because I've never heard, I've never sort of thought that or heard that. I always just thought the U.S. and I knew China was rising in terms of like its power and money, etc. But I just, I no, I never really thought that the U.S. was sort of going down. I just it was just maybe just China and the US going to be up together. Kind Largely of based off skewing data. In 1945, the US was 54% <laughs> of the world's economy and now it's 24%. But I mean, that's still crazy, but 54% of the world's economy? What the fuck? That is insane. This is largely caused by the world wars blowing up every other major industrialized economy. If you start looking in 1965 when the Europeans had had the chance to regrow their economies, the US is able to maintain a stable quarter or so of the world's economy. That's fascinating. While places like China or India have seen massive economic growth, it's incredible that the U.S. is able to maintain its position. It's the only part of the developed world that's been able to do it. Look at how the modern European Union countries, for example, have gone from 38 to 24 percent of the world's economy since 1965. However, this does mask a point, that American power in real terms has declined since America's allies have also declined in economic power. Since most of Europe is an American ally, declining European and Japanese economic power in real terms does result in decline in American power. It's far easier for cultural and geographic reasons for America to keep a country like Germany or Britain as an ally than it would a powerful India or China. In 1970, the American coalition of Western Europe, Japan, and North America were the only really economically important areas. That's no longer the case, largely due to the rise of East Asia. The large, mostly land-centered, which goes against America's immense naval power, Asian countries will follow their own agendas and mean a weakening of the American order. Something to consider here that a lot of people ignore is that they generally compare China and America or India and America, and they look at everything good in China and ignore everything good in America. And the mm. truth is that basically all of America's competitors have their own series. Some issues with China. I remember learning about China in geography a few years ago, and that, like, there's a lot of, there is definitely a lot of issues from treating workers insanely badly. There's not enough kids. I mean, oh, because of the one-child policy that they ended up ab abolishing. But like, the population there is insane. Oh, well, I didn't know there was not enough kids, though. I didn't know it led to that. So not enough kids, not enough water. The neighbours dislike them. Greater inequality, no coherent ideology, massive social issues due to industrialization and corruption. Subprime economy, I could go on. Serious issues He's not that I discussed man. in other videos in this playlist. And for all the issues you see in America, there are equally as many, if not more, in China or any competitor. Mm. We can't return to the world of 1990 in which the U.S. was the total world power since the U.S. just physically can't maintain control over continental Asia. There's no way the U.S. would militarily occupy or turn China into a puppet state. Similarly, even if World War III were to wreck all of Asia, they'd have enough human capital that they could get themselves back together anyway. What I'm saying here is that if a country has enough engineers that can't stay poor in the same way that Germany and Japan were beaten down in the World 
Wars, but were able to become wealthy quite quickly afterwards. There's no way China can become a poor country again in the long scheme of things. Similarly, American power is largely predicated upon America's sheer size. The Germans were able to produce more goods than the Americans for their population size and were statistically and militarily more effective. The U.S. was the largest country in the game and was largely able to smash other countries just through its sheer size. If Germany had 150 million people like America did, it would have easily won the world wars. However, this advantage is easily erased by countries with China's population, being four times America's. You almost never see four-to-one kill ratios in history, meaning the only way the Americans could beat the Chinese in a conventional war would be pulling on Europe extremely hard, which the Europeans aren't that willing to do. This means the U.S. effectively has to surrender continental Asia in the next few decades. A real hidden advantage America has its demographics, in which America is one of the few developed countries with a stable birth rate. Modern economics as we understand it is dependent upon growing populations, since the last time the world's population was in decline was in the 15th century. Countries like Japan, Germany, China, and Russia are projected that their populations have for the next generation, which effectively means their economies will tank, something I've talked about in a lot of other videos, which will give the U.S. a massive advantage going forward. I think after a crisis, cultures will adapt and populations will stabilize around the world, largely since the crisis will be so horrifying, but I'm generally- Bro, it's crazy how, like how the older population, the older your population is, the more likely there's gonna be a crash in the market. How those things like link, it's just, it's wild to me. It makes sense, but it's just wild. The US, since it's seeing ruralization due to Zoom and rural populations have more kids. Similarly, the U.S. is at a low point of median income, which will be resolved by reindustrialization and declines in immigration, which is demonstrated in the last few years being the largest eras of unskilled wage growth in 50 years in American history. As standard of life improves, people will have more kids, which has normally occurred across history. Although I could see India and China, or potentially Russia, or even some Islamic power be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with America at some point in this century. Europe's really weak. None of the European countries are as large as America, and none of the willpower to really pull out of America's umbrella. Similarly, the European Union lacks coherent leadership due to the thousand years of emphasis on the nation and Western culture, meaning it can't act independently. This means that America has the potential to continue to have Europe under its sway, if it chooses, and which gives America another continent to base its power off and population and economic power. We're getting to the point where the West no longer dominates the world system, which means that America, as the dominant Western power, will see a contraction of importance in the total world system by 2050. The demographics also don't presage massive political expansion either. You can generally predict massive geographic expansion by when population bloats occur. Britain and France colonized most of the world when they had population growth, Germany did the world wars when they did, and Russia conquered half of Europe when they did. The US's stable population means that although it won't contract, it won't see huge expansion either. Although the US is seeing large social issues now, America is still a functioning society with a lot of trust. Americans often disagree with this, but go to a country like Mexico where no one trusts the government, the police, and often their neighbors, and see what I mean. The US is still a country you can drive down a highway and you know you won't get robbed, and you can form a business and know the local mayor won't burn it to the ground if you don't pay him off, and that's really what matters. America still maintains its strongest trait, its dynamism. Although the Germans might be amazing in war and manufacturing, and the Indians might have massive numbers, the Americans have continually proved themselves ridiculously adaptive. America is always in the forefront of technology, culture, and economic ability. America is the sort of country where if people are lonely, a charismatic preacher founds a church, if there's an untapped iron deposit, companies will be lining up to mine it, and banks have to compete to make loans to small businesses, all of which allows America to move quickly and solve its own problems quickly. This is due to America's highly flexible and capitalist social model. You'll be able to tell when the era of American preeminence is over, when its capitalist spirit's dead, and America becomes openly hierarchical, process-driven, and bureaucratic. Similarly, America's pioneer spirit that dates back to its founding and large amounts of money and technological know-how means that it's the best positioned of the major powers for the colonization of space that will almost certainly occur in the next few decades. Something I'd like to stress here is that there's nothing fundamentally wrong with America. I can't see anything that would literally endanger America's functioning as a successful nation in the long term by any metric. America is having a bad day which can change. Remember, France went from having a revolution and being invaded in 1790 to 1810 controlling the vast majority of Europe and invading Russia. Good Actually, point, my top worry for American things change quick, culture is man. that it's too technology-centered and people will vanish onto their phones and screens and not talk to each other and then it will lose social cohesion that way. However, you can already start to tell that people are getting lonely and want community. Mark my words, the generation after the Zoomers is going to be the most social in American history as a backlash to their parents. A big question for American power. So. That's an interesting um, prediction. 
I think it's, I thought it's just going to get worse and worse. Like technology is just like sort of people meeting less and less. And like with COVID now, I mean, who knows when it's fully over with all these variants now. People like sort of being stuck inside having to talk on the phones. But I mean, maybe there's something that I don't know. Or he's just sort of assuming something that I hope is true. But for whether or not the U.S. wants to be a power. A major geographic problem for American powers, the U.S. is so geographically isolated from Eurasia, and the U.S. is basically independent of the rest of the world economically, and in everything else, meaning that the U.S. is actively incentivized to not be involved in the rest of the world since it's expensive. The Americans took a British weakness, coming from an island nation, of viewing the rest of the world contemptuously and irresponsibly dabbling in other areas, or as I call it in another video, blowing up countries and then forgetting they exist afterwards, to another level. The U.S. doesn't maintain a coherent foreign policy since it doesn't have to. American foreign policy is based off the uneducated opinions of voters in Pennsylvania or Florida who vote emotionally. America has no reason to change this either, given that it's a long way from enemy forces threatening Seattle or Houston. The big deciding factor here is how much the U.S. and Europe deviate. The only parts of the world the Americans care about a lot is Western Europe, since most Americans are of Western European ancestry. However, if the Europeans do too much to alienate the Americans, or the two take very different ideological directions, or if America becomes a minority white nation, that can change. Effectively, if America and Europe remain together as a coherent Western bloc, America will remain involved in the world system, and if not, America will be like China, which has been similarly geographically isolated as America. China has periodically struck out across Central Asia, conquering for glory and then realized it didn't make a lot of economic sense and then gave up. If America becomes divorced from Europe in the long term, that'll happen. However, I don't see America ever becoming divorced from Oceania and Britain, which are far too culturally similar. There is no way Americans could see the Chinese or some hyper-powered future version of Indonesia genocide the Australians and not try their damnness to stop it. This will mean that America will remain the dominant naval power no matter what in order to do this. If America is the dominant naval power, it means that Japan with its declining population will remain part of the American sphere. Whether America will move from being a naval power to being part of the Eurasian landmass in the long term is the question. A major question here is that whether America follows an ideological trajectory similar to Europe or continues on its own current trajectory. Europe since World War II has decided that providing the most comfortable lives for their citizens is the ultimate aim of their state, which has provided many European countries with very pleasant livings, but has also decayed Europe's long-term strategic abilities through lack of military initiative and economic growth. The things dividing Europe and America are complex, but largely boil down to the world wars and religion. If America continues to see declining religiosity, it'll probably take a similar path to Europe of little military spending and large bureaucratic welfare states at home, which could provide Americans with a good standard of living for a while, but would also decay the birth rate and economic growth as well, which would hurt America's long-term optics. Well, the collapse of the American military support system would plunge the rest of the world into chaos. However, Wait, countries is legally obligated to protect. However, American support system would countries the United States is legally obligated to defend. Fucking hell, look at all these countries. Bro, the whole of the Americas pretty much. You got pretty much the whole of Europe, Oceania, parts of Asia, parts of Africa. <laughs> I mean, god damn. Plunge the rest of the world into chaos. However, American religion has remained dynamic and competitive, while America is none of the ideological nihilism that came from the world wars that plagues Europe, meaning that I generally find this path to be unlikely. So in summary, America remains a very powerful country. We're not going to see a world going forward which America is weak and poor. However, we're also not going to see a world in which America remains unchallenged to, say, bomb Afghanistan in the heart of Asia with impunity. The long-term question is largely whether America will stay intertwined with Europe and get highly involved in the world system in order to protect Europe with the two becoming partners, or whether America will become a mega Britain, a massive wealthy seafaring empire. What if Altist, and thanks for watching. If you enjoyed a this- Wealthy Britain. Fair enough. This is a really cool video, man. I love this channel so much. The Americans are very lucky people they bordered they're bordered to the north and south by weak neighbors and to the east by west by fish oh everyone this one people in the states are so bored and detached from reality most of us romanticize the idea of the nation falling apart i predict wales will surpass america in the next 30 years it's inevitable wales <laughs> wales out of everywhere petition to rename the usa to simply mega britain <laughs> oh it's sad but it's true we just are, we're just a little country to the side nowadays. America has been in decline ever since they shot Harambe. <laughs> Wasn't it Harambe's fucking anniversary a few days ago? I'm voting for Obama as Emperor of the Turks. Is America in decline? Anyone old enough to remember what things were like 30 years ago will undoubtedly believe. Undoubt 
undoubtedly give you a resounding yes. It won't collapse or become irrelevant, but it won't be unchallenged, which is pretty much what you said at the end, to be honest. That's kind of what I agree with. The US will always be like one of the top countries. Of, I feel like with just China, US and China, to be honest. I don't know that. I, I, who am I to say? But it's an interesting topic. Interesting to see his ideas and stuff. What are your thoughts on this? And, I mean, do you agree with this? If you don't, let me know what, what sort of things you disagree with and sort of explain, basically. But, yeah, hopefully join until next time. Like, subscribe. Peace.